unfortunately are not fake those are real tweets like real things that i said no i'm sorry can clinton kate be so fucking for real there was a lot of drama it was a lot of back and forth i was really going through it i was having a major episode everybody knows this. they are horrible i want to talk about particularly the trayvon martin george zimmerman situation put it on top of his suitcases i set it outside my apartment and i never saw him again okay all right you guys i have had a lot to say about accountability lately and how important it is and how far it can go these first set of videos are strictly going to be about my relationship with brooke but i will tackle all the allegations Are you telling me that, that mom is alive she's alive first up mr beast is in the spotlight for using some seriously inappropriate language as a teen and he's finally owning up to his past mistakes. But hold on, there's more drama brewing. Brooke Schofield is also in the apology hot seat after some of her old racist tweets resurfaced, adding fuel to the fire. And if that wasn't enough to keep you hooked, we'll break down the TikTok chaos surrounding Brooke Schofield and Clinton Kane, where drama is unfolding in real time. From past regrets to current controversies, we're diving into every juicy detail. Buckle up and let's get into the thick of it. Mr. Beast's scandalous drama unfolds. Mr. Beast just can't catch a break. Fresh from his latest scandal, it turns out old clips of him using some seriously questionable language have resurfaced, causing quite the stir. So it looks like while Mr. Beast was trying to be the funny guy, he ended up making some pretty tasteless jokes. I mean, the dude was caught making racist and homophobic comments on a live stream, which honestly sounds like a blast from a past he'd rather forget. And here's the juicy bit. His team is scrambling to clean up the mess, claiming he's learned his lesson and is now all about using his platform for good. But come on, can fans really just forget that cringeworthy stuff overnight? I doubt it. Just as Mr. Beast is dealing with his own hot water, another scandal is bubbling up. It's all about one of his co-hosts, Ava Chris Tyson, who's been hit with some seriously ugly accusations involving a teeny tiny. Yikes! Mr. Beast is playing the role of the concerned friend, saying he's disgusted and hiring a private investigator to get to the bottom of it. Tyson's denying everything, but the timing of this drama? Totally sketchy. Getting ripped out of a reality that I didn't want to be taken out of. I, I can do that, maybe, maybe. Everyone around me knows that I'm trans, so mentally it can be kind of hard to- Because I was hiding my true self from them. It's like Mr. Beast can't catch a break with one problem after another dropping like hot potatoes. And speaking of hot potatoes, let's not forget Mr. Beast's latest venture, a mega reality show on Amazon Prime called Beast Games. Sounds like a crazy good time, right? With a whopping $5 million prize up for grabs, this show is gearing up to be a big hit. But here's the tea. Despite all the controversy swirling around him, Mr. Beast is still pushing forward with this flashy project. It's almost like he's daring everyone to throw shade while he rolls out his next big thing. Who knew that a massive cash prize and intense competition could be Mr. Beast's way of saying, I'm still here, drama or not? So as Mr. Beast tries to navigate these rough waters, the big question is, will his efforts to mend his image stick, or will the drama just keep piling up? Brooke Schofield's racist tweets Brooke Schofield is at the center of a storm after some old, deeply problematic tweets resurfaced. For those not in the loop, Brooke, who's known for her TikTok fame and her podcast, Cancelled with Tana Mongo, has a serious lapse in judgment between 2012 and 2015. These tweets, which were recently dug up by Pop Crave, reveal some incredibly racist and offensive opinions, particularly about the tragic death of Trayvon Martin. Talk about a blast from the past, only this one's not so nostalgic. So what's the tea on these tweets? Brooke took to Twitter back in the day to make some pretty outrageous claims about Trayvon Martin, a 17-year-old African-American who was fatally shot by George Zimmerman. Her tweets argued that Martin's death wasn't a racially motivated crime, but rather a case of self-defense gone awry. Unfortunately, are not fake. Those are real tweets, like real things that I said. They are horrible. I want to talk about particularly the Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman situation. All right, you guys, I have had a lot to say about accountability lately and how important it is and how far it can go. First of all, I want to acknowledge that I feel the same way about them that you do. I think they're so disturbing, they're wrong, they're horrible, and they're... She even suggested that if Zimmerman had shot a white person, it wouldn't have made headlines. Oh, and don't get me started on her other comments, like comparing her hair to most African Americans and making fun of her own past racist remarks. It's like she went out of her way to be as insensitive as possible. 
The backlash was immediate and intense. Critics have slammed Schofield for trying to downplay her past behavior with the classic I was just a stupid kid excuse. One particularly fiery response pointed out the double standard. Teenagers of color are often held accountable for much less, so why should Schofield's age serve as a get-out-of-jail-free card? It's a valid point and definitely adds fuel to the fire. To address the storm she's in, Schofield took to TikTok to offer a heartfelt apology. She described her old tweets as disturbing, wrong, horrible, and disgusting. She admitted that she was raised in a more conservative environment which influenced her views at the time. According to Brooke, her grandparents, who raised her after she was adopted, were staunchly right-wing and steeped in conservative media. That environment, she claims, shaped her opinions and contributed to her problematic tweets. But here's where it gets interesting. Schofield acknowledges that while her upbringing played a role, it doesn't excuse her behavior. She's fully aware that using her past as a crutch isn't going to win her any sympathy. Brooke has stated that she's done a lot of growing up since then and her views has significantly changed. She even pointed out that she's no longer the person who made those tweets and that her current beliefs are a far cry from her teenage self. And as if things weren't already chaotic enough, Brooke's apology comes on the heels of another controversy. Recently, she made headlines by accusing her ex-boyfriend, Clinton Kane, of faking his Australian identity. The whole situation added another layer of drama to her already turbulent year. I mean, between the resurfaced tweets and the accusations against her ex, it seems like Schofield's life has become one big headline after another. In her TikTok apology, Brooke made it clear she's not looking for pity. She's aware that some people may never forgive her, and she understands why. Her message was a mix of regret and a plea for understanding, emphasizing that she's not the same person she was when those tweets were sent out. It's clear that she's hoping people will give her the chance to show that she's grown and changed. Clinton Kane Exposed The drama between Brooke Schofield and Clinton Kane is like a soap opera we didn't know we needed. If you haven't been following, let me break down the juicy details of how Brooke managed to air out Clinton's dirty laundry in a series of 14 TikToks that will make you question everything you thought you knew about love and deception. Brooke and Clinton's saga began with a whirlwind romance that seemed straight out of a fantasy novel, except as it turns out, the fantasy was entirely fabricated. Brooke, a TikTok personality and podcast host, started dating Clinton Kane, a singer with a flair for dramatic storytelling. From the start, it was clear there were some red flags, but Brooke was smitten and eventually fell for the charming yet incredibly deceptive Clinton. Clinton, it seems, was living a double life, or should I say, a triple life. He spun an elaborate web of lies about who he was and where he came from. According to Brooke's explosive TikTok series, Clinton claimed he was from Perth, Australia. Spoiler alert, he's actually from Brunei. Talk about a geographic identity crisis. The list of lies doesn't end there. Clinton told Brooke that his entire family had tragically passed away within a year. However, Brooke's detective work revealed that while his father had indeed died, I heard you picked her up, hooked up with her, and then got her a Sprite. And the guy's like, first of all, no one even a Sprite. No, I'm sorry. Can Clinton Kane be so fucking for real? She says she found out on June 16th. So what is it? How about you lied about your age, you fucking weirdo? We broke up the weekend of the Life is Beautiful Festival, which was the end of September, okay? His mother and brother were very much alive and kicking. Not just that, Clinton had apparently invented dramatic stories about his mother's death and even claimed she was a Norwegian blonde. In reality, she's Asian and still around. These first set of videos are strictly going to be about my relationship with Brooke, but I will tackle all the allegations. We met on my show, just like she said, on May 13th. This was June 2nd, um, a conversation with our mutual friends at the time. Yeah. There is a distorted reality, and there is reality. I am here to give you all the facts. Oh, the plot thickens. Adding to the deception, Clinton said he had to attend the supposed funerals via Zoom during COVID. But guess what? No funerals happened for his mom or brother because they weren't dead in the first place. This level of dishonesty is next level, and you have to wonder if Clinton ever took a break from his fantasy world. 
there was a lot of drama. It was a lot of back and forth. I was really going through it. I was having a major episode. Everybody knows this. Put it on top of his suitcases. I set it outside my apartment and I never saw him again, okay? You telling me that that mom is alive. She's alive. You told me, you know you fucking told me and you know I can show people. He cheated on me with dozens and dozens of women. He does not, I mean, at least so far, he has not mentioned that part. And let's talk about Clinton's supposed glamorous past. He painted a picture of himself growing up in a luxurious eight-bedroom beach house with nannies and maids galore. But in reality, his upbringing was nowhere near the opulent lifestyle he described. He even claimed that the girl he wrote his hit song, I'm in love about, cheated on him when in fact, he was the one playing the field with around 15 different women. Brooke's TikTok revelations also shed light on some serious emotional abuse. Clinton wasn't just lying about his past, he was also gaslighting Brooke and making her feel responsible for his supposed trauma. This twisted tactic of love bombing and isolating Brooke while accusing her of exacerbating his non-existent issues sounds like classic manipulation. Brooke admitted that she overlooked many of these red flags because she was struggling with her own mental health at the time. But once she started piecing things together, her suspicions turned into a full-blown investigation. And boy, did she uncover a mess. You said your mom fell down the stairs and, and she owned Birkenstocks and she was in a coma and she got hit by a car. Like, but he made it such an issue if I wanted to do anything for myself. That's the point I was trying to make. He's referencing me saying like one of his songs is about his ex-girlfriend and one of his songs is about his dead mom. He never let me leave. Like, of course I got to go home. He just made such a thing of it every single time. And baby, I got screenshots of that. After Clinton posted a TikTok accusing Brooke of still talking about their relationship two years later, she decided it was time to drop the truth bomb. She aired out every lie and deceitful act Clinton had inflicted on her, and the world watched as the saga unfolded. Now, if you're wondering why Brooke decided to go public with all this drama, it's probably because she wanted to reclaim her narrative and make sure Clinton's lies didn't go unchallenged. And let's be honest, watching a manipulative ex get called out in such a dramatic fashion is pure entertainment gold. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.